There's a greasy old spring mattress in the corner, resting on piles of soft cover books. White linen and a pillow are visible under a worn-out caracal blanket. Someone has been squatting here. The linen is fresh, recently washed. You force the rest of the sentence out through pain, thick as molasses, no longer able to hear yourself speak. You know, officer, you can rest here if you are feeling tired. I will keep watch. You could use some rest for what's ahead. You face the concrete wall. There's less light there, in the dark corner. Like a dog, you lie there. You didn't realize how tired you were. Your body is still nowhere near healed. The blanket feels cold. The entire room does. Concrete and cold. Minutes pass. Half an hour, maybe. The sounds of the sea beyond grow distant. Your eyelids close. Until you feel yourself standing up in the darkness, right next to the mattress. Slowly, the world begins to hatch from the blackness. It's evening. day, the innocence of humanism, internationalism, and the welfare state turns around to face you. She has an airship airbag in her hand. She seems to be in a hurry, off to advise the Queen of Shest, most likely. This is the Holy Suzerain of Mwindi and Insulinda, definitely not your wife. You need to talk to her. Think of the historical knowledge you could glean. I'm going to Morova, to live there, in Grad. It's one million kilometers away, Harry. Might as well be another lifetime. Just my scepter, my globe crucigere, a spare silk gown, a toothbrush, travel documents, the crown of immortality. Oh, this. This is just a wreath. The crown of immortality is made of rarefied light, manna and raw palladium. It was passed on to me by the rulers of late antiquity. She looks at the suitcase, not knowing what more to say. Then, over her shoulder, silence. Her nuptial gown flows in the wind, wraps around her holy body. Anyway. No, Harry. No. I don't want a massive, epic showdown. I want to go to the aerodrome. I have tickets for the 1020 flight to Morova. Really, we don't have anything to talk about anymore. Every combination of words has been played out. The atoms don't form us anymore. Us. Our love. Our unborn daughters. It's all gone. I have to go to the aerodrome. I have to leave Ravishol and you. And you have to be alone. In hell. Forever. That's just the way it is. Oh God, whatever you do, don't try to kiss her yet. Not after that. You're still reeling. You'll fall over if you try now.
I don't want it. It looks expensive. I don't want it. That's not what figurines do, Harry. She looks at the headless found rider between your fingers and doesn't know what to say. The figurines don't do anything, anything at all. But I thought the historic figure she had. Yes, I thought it would be good. Harry, I don't want things. I want to go to the aerodrome. I didn't ask for things. It's too late to give me anything. I would have liked the headless fallen rider back then. <laughs> 